So I wanted to read a particular portion from the Bible. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to read it from uh, verses 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often you can, and drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a man examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. When we read this particular portion in the scripture, we read uh, something coming very repeatedly, damnation, discerning, or examining yourself. It is talking about how... Uh, Many a times we do certain things even not knowing the fullest of the blessings God has made available for the body of Christ in many ways. The Bible is talking in this particular passage about how when we have a proper discernment in taking the body and blood of Jesus Christ, it really helps us in many ways, particularly when we discern the body of Christ, when we call the body of Christ, is not only the, the original body with Jesus suffered persecution, but is, there is another body which is we, we the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. As the body of Christ which suffered persecution and torture in the cross of Calvary that is his own body again as a church we are the body of Christ too and Bible says we need to discern the body of Christ properly amen and today we are here not to discern the original body the, the, the body of Jesus where he lived on this earth you know, he was tortured, he suffered for us, he paid a price on the cross of Calvary. Redemption was made available. And we discern it, and we partake in the Lord's table for our healing, for our blessing, and for the resurrection of godly saints at the time when Jesus will come back again. And the discernment also includes receiving members in the body of Christ with love and forgiveness. Amen. Why damnation? Because many times we take part without a forgiving heart. You know, in a way, don't be condemned by yourself because of you, some of the shortcomings, your failures or some of the personal struggles you might have. This is not talking about that here. We are all sinners saved by grace. We all come before the throne of grace seeking God's mercy. Despite of our shortcomings and struggles and failures, God is always merciful in wanting to receive you anytime you come before the throne of grace. But here, discerning the body of Christ or the damnation the Bible is talking here is an unforgiving heart a person might have when he takes God's communion. Discern the body of Christ or in this congregation. That's why Paul before. In the beginning of this chapter he said. When you come together. 
when you come into one place this is not to eat the lord's supper this is not the way and in the verses 18 he say first of all when you come together in the church i hear that there are divisions among you i partly believe it there are divisions among you paul is addressing a issue where believers in the same body of christ are not growing in love together love is missing or there is a problem in the brotherlyhood or their problem in how they relate to each other maybe they are sticking to one group forming groups in the church or not really embracing everyone as a body unforgiveness bitterness in our life and any things that is not been settled any short accounts or or sometimes we allow so much of enmity in our life that we don't really take efforts to settle matters with our brothers or with the relatives or with with with, with whoever we might uh, you know have our daily uh, fellowship going on but bible says we need to really let go everything anything that is burdensome and forgiving and resolving that matter and coming together and discerning the body of Christ it is accepting and also in other way reconciling with the people of God and growing in love is the the foremost thing important in observing lord's communion hallelujah so last week we spoke on the works of the holy spirit and how holy spirit as a person in trinity is very very important we know that jesus christ is the gift to the world jesus christ was given as a gift to the whole world wherein holy spirit is a gift to the church and every born again believer in jesus christ holy spirit is given as a gift In John chapter 14 we read uh, Jesus said to his disciples the world cannot receive the holy spirit but you have received him and he is within you and is with you forever and ever the world has not known the spirit of truth but you have received the holy spirit in your life in genesis when the word when the earth was empty and void darkness was upon the face of the water there was no order darkness was upon the face of the waters empty and void and holy spirit hovered upon the waters the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters just because of that reason even before god can create a perfect universe he sent his holy spirit to hover upon the waters and this evening the spirit of god is hovering over our life so before god can do a perfect thing in our life it is the holy spirit who does the preliminary work he is the one to come before he is the one to do things in our life to set things in order so that emptiness and darkness might be removed hallelujah if holy spirit is not come to the world there is no church today there is no preaching amen he is the senior pastor he is the founder of all ministries he is the mastermind behind every initiations all over the world birthing missions and revivals and it is the holy spirit who is doing that work amen that's why we need the third personality the third person in the trinity holy spirit to come and partner with our work in our life and to help you along the paracletus the helper the comforter the one who is sent as an intercessor and advocate to stand with us all the time 
And this evening as body of Christ we are here celebrating the goodness of God. And this evening I believe as we give prominence as we realize the need for Holy Spirit in our life as you begin to grow in it even as you go before you go to bed or before you could start the day just invite the presence of Holy Spirit a recognition of God's presence in your life the emptiness of God's presence we have created to enjoy the presence of God as God's children we are longing for his presence every day when his presence comes that will change every atmosphere and situation hallelujah so I just wanted to bless you with that word and may the Lord bless you and we're going to close this service in prayer